screwed up as to how to tackle this, but maybe you've jumped straight into here because you like a challenge. So, if we start with the expression a half x minus 3y to the power 5, we can use the binomial theorem, of course, because our uh, term in the bracket has two terms, binomial, literally meaning two uh, numbers or two terms. So, we can write out the formula in its general form which is the sum from r equals 0 to n of n choose r x to the power n minus r times y to the r. In this case here, n is 5. So I can rewrite this again as the sum of terms from r equals 0 to 5. Our binomial coefficient, binomial coefficient becomes 5 choose r. And our first term is a half x. That goes in one bracket the power 5 minus r and a second term really important that that negative 3 comes with the term negative 3 y to the power r so here we've got our formula so far and again uh, looking at the numbers of r from 0 to 5 that's 6 terms so we're going to write out our 6 terms with increasing values of R. So if I start with R equals 0, I've got 5, 0, a half x to the power 5. I'm going to leave out the second um, term, negative 3y to the power 0, because that automatically goes to 1. And I've got 5 choose 1, a half x to the power 4, and negative 3y to the power 1, plus 5 choose 2 is a half x to the power 3 and negative 3y to the squared. Now remember uh, that these powers should always add up to 5 uh, across the two terms that we've got. So in this case here, 3 and 2 add up to 5. That's good. And we're still on track. We've got 5 choose 3, a half x to the power 2 and negative 3y to the power 3. Going on to the next line, I've got 5 choose 4 half x on its own and to the power of 1 that is. We've got that. And our last term is 5 choose 5. Now this time it's our half x term which goes to the power of 0 which is just to 1. So we can drop that and we've just got negative 3y to the power of 5. See so I've got my six terms. Uh, what about my coefficients? Well all the row 5 uh, we're going to have 1, 5, 10, 10, and 5, and 1. So you find a wee space to write them somewhere. That gives you the different coefficients we're going to apply along the way. So our first co coefficient is 1, which means that we're really just dealing with a half x to the power 5. Now, at this stage, you might want to also start to split up the number term, the coefficient formula later. So we've got a half to the power of 5. A half to the power of 5 is 1 over 2 to the power of 5. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So we've got basically 1 times, let's put that in, I'm going to have to tidy it up anyway, uh, 30, 1 over 32 x to the power of 5. The next one, uh, 5 choose 1 is 5, multiplied by, we've got lots of stuff going on here. Um, what have we got? Well, let's keep this in a bracket for just now. A half to the power of 4 is 1 over 16x to the power of 4. And I've still got to multiply that by negative 3y, which I'm going to do a wee bit later. My next term, 5 choose 2, is 10 multiplied by, well, a half x cubed is 1 over 8. 2 to the power of 3 is 8x cubed. And I'm going to sort out negative 3y squared. This one here becomes positive 9y squared. So I'll write that in. Then I'm just going to basically do the same thing for the other three terms. I'll do them underneath. So I've got 5 choose 3. So we're still at 10. And a half x all squared becomes a quarter x squared. And our negative 3y cubed becomes 
negative 27 y cubed and then we'll down to the bottom row here we've got 5 choose 4 is 5 we've just got a half x and then we've got negative 3 to the power 4 is positive 81 y to the 4 and our very last term our coefficient there is 1 uh, multiplied by negative 3 to the power 5 is negative what's that 243 243 y to the power 5 lots of stuff going on there plenty to simplify oops i just try to get this to a point so first term we've just got our x to the 5 over 22 we'll just keep it nice and compact uh, we've got a second expression here. Let's just look at this here. We've got all of this. Right. So what's going on here? We've got 5 times a 16 times negative 3. So that gives us negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 over 16. Uh, we've got x to the 4 and y. So I'll write it like that. Uh, the next expression here, let's just kind of point to it. That one there. Again, we've got three numerical coefficients, 10 and 8 and 9, multiplying the two whole numbers there. 10 times 9 is 90 over 8. And it's x cubed y squared. Don't worry about simplifying. It's sometimes better just to do what's there and then worry about simplifying later on. Uh, the next one here down below we've got negative 270 over 4 x squared y cubed. Next term I've got 5 times 81 which is 405 over 2 x y to the 4 and the last term there's a pretty well already sorted, negative 243y to the 5. So we've pretty well got our solution. There's just a couple of places where we could simplify that, uh, the two kind of middle terms. Don't worry about writing stuff out. It's about being patient when you're doing this. Don't think that you're going to have to rush things just because you don't want to write things out. Again, 90 over 8 just simplifies to 45 over 4 and 270 over 4 if we just well, half that 135 over 2 I think is all we can do with that and when you're writing things out again always check that you're copying your terms down correctly coefficients are Correct, powers are correct. We can do a wee quick check that all the powers in each term add up to 5. You get 5, you get 4 and 1, 3 and 2. Yep, so they all add up to 5. We can also have a look at the pattern of the signs. That can be a wee check here. Have you noticed that this, uh, each term is alternately positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative? It's quite good to spot if you made a mistake if there's a break in that pattern. So I think we're good. I think that's our answer. So we can say that the expansion of a half x minus 3y to the power 5 is that.